All right, so how do you defend against the spoof attack? Well, one of the ways, of course, is to not allow um, the, um, the IP source routing. We'll talk about that in the section on hardening or locking down the router. We'll also talk about using packet filters to try to, uh, to, to prevent unwanted traffic from getting through. That's the access control list. And as I got through saying, that even though it's great that they, they redirected it as a hacker, great for them, and they're watching your packets, if you have an encrypted session, then uh, unless they somehow fool you into encrypting it with them and they can decrypt and send it on its way, they can't read the traffic because it's an encrypted session through their device. And so whatever they get would be worthless. So uh, what you're going to see as a very common solution, encryption, encryption, encryption. And you know, it probably makes sense as you move into IP6 and we see that all host-to-host -host uh, communication will now be encrypted as a standard. That makes sense because we're trying to eliminate the numbers of attacks of people intercepting information. Well, one of the different or many different types of attacks that we've talked about is one that's a man in the middle. And we'll uh, look at some of the ways that we can try to disable these attacks from our uh, security at layer two. We'll see that in some of the upcoming modules. But just to give you the idea of what can occur if you have an unscrupulous employee that has access to your uh, local network. So I have access to our local network. I've downloaded Kane Enable. It's available at uh, oxid.it. I figure I'll give you the name of the, um, of the uh, website because you'll Google it anyway. So under the Network tab, what I'm going to do is first um, pick um, which adapter card I want to use in my, on my PC. And so I've chosen one that's got a local address. And then what I'm going to basically do is um, click on the Start Stop Sniffer. That means I'm now passively sniffing to any packet that comes into uh, my network. And then with the plus sign, I'm going to um, go out here and, let's see, oh, sorry, Sniffer. Uh, under the sniffer, I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to have it scan for all of the uh, PCs uh, or anything with an IP address that is on this network. So just like that, you can see that I was quickly able to grab any of these PCs that are out there. Now if I go back to network, of course Microsoft has its ability to, to uh, allow you to basically broadcast information, but hey, that's not our concern. We're going to stick here at layers 2 and layer 3. Now that I have this information, I know that I have a router right here, this Netgear uh, router that we're using. And what I can do, uh, and you can see a couple other things like this uh, Cisco Linksys and a couple other things that show up here to me as, as being uh, devices that might be out there helping us um, in the realm of, uh, of moving traffic around. But anyway, I can go down here under APR and begin to do this art poisoning, this man in the middle. I'll come back to that in just a second. I can also go out there and have this thing monitoring and listening for routing protocols and gather routing information uh, that, I, that I learn from, um, from any of the uh, items that are out there. So again, this is just a, a great way of being able to go out here and just monitor your networks. As I'm listening to traffic, if I pick up any passwords, it'll just scrape those right off as any uh, sniffer would and give me that capability. I can also uh, intercede between two phone calls and basically eavesdrop on any voice over IP traffic that I might be able to get, especially if I can start doing some uh, VLAN hopping. So back to the hosts, I'm just showing you some of the things that this little tool can do for you um, without much skill. When it comes to uh, the uh, APR part of this, the APR, the, the uh, poisoning and, and um, the ARP cache poisoning, is basically going to send gratuitous ARPs out to uh, all of the um, uh, switches or to all of the PCs that I list here. And so really what I want to do is I want to poison the traffic between, um, between this address, the router, the main gateway, and I'm just going to arbitrarily pick any one of these uh, other hosts. And so now that this is set up, basically what's going to happen is I will send a gratuitous ARP to uh, the host at set.34 and tell them, hey, look, your router has a new MAC address. I'll go to the router and tell it, hey, look, your host.1.34 uh, has a new MAC address. And so the router and the switches involved are going to format their packets for my destination MAC address. The switch will forward them along exactly the way the switch is supposed to do. And then I will act as a router in between them so that uh, as this thing happens, 
uh, I'll basically be able to own all of the information, the traffic that's moving from my machine to the next. So again, all I'd have to do at this point is click on this, uh, this start stop APR. But if I did that, then I would be actually intercepting people's traffic from within the network where uh, our facilities are located. And I would be grabbing information uh, without permission. And so that would be uh, something that we certainly don't want to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that off the list. So I I'm not going to actually run it. It would be nice if I could actually do that same kind of um, man in the middle against my address that ends in 13. But you'll notice that one of the things that happens is, is, is it doesn't consider you as a part of the victim list. But that's okay. Let's just take a look at some of the stuff that it does do. I've got the sniffer running right now. And as I said, if I come down here into passwords, if I could have routed traffic through me, if I, if I would have done it, then it would have picked up um, a lot of this uh, uh, traffic of uh, the uh, password. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this read notify site and I set it up with a very uh, easy uh, password that will not be there by the time you watch this video. So uh, I've set it up with a password of password. This is a program that you can use to uh, to verify if somebody's uh, received your email. I'm going to sign in, come down here to um, to the passwords tab and right here under HTTP you can see that all of the passwords of anything that I've set up here uh, and even a couple others that I didn't uh, put in there but there's my my KLM systems login with my password of password for that read notify site so it's just showing you uh, how easy it is had I run the man in the middle that I could be grabbing this information uh, we'll do a telnet session we've uh, been doing some some telnets uh, to some um, uh, addresses out oh, well that didn't work out very well let's try that again uh, to some of our, our lab equipment. So let me just uh, see if we can open that Telnet session and paste that in, make our connection, and again log in. But this time I'm not going to tell you the password I'm sending. Unauthorized access. And um, oh, I didn't get the, uh, the, the Telnet session there to show up under the passwords like I had hoped. Let's, uh, let's see if I'm going to have to actually log in correctly so let's see if that makes any difference so there I logged in correctly and uh, oh in that case it's uh, kind of odd it actually didn't pick up that extra telnet session which it should have done it should have uh, uh, come down under the passwords here under telnet and show me the uh, the stuff that it sniffed so again if I had been doing I know if I had been doing this as a man in the middle you would have seen that Telnet session uh, logging in. So anyway, there's uh, some of the tools, some of the things that we want to use our Cisco devices to be able to prohibit. And in this particular instance, we'll uh, look at a module where we'll talk about uh, being able to stop gratuitous ARP attacks, to try to uh, do some things like uh, the Sticky Max, and uh, just to have a good understanding of the options that are available to prohibit this kind of an attack that it can occur from inside of your network easily enough. And that was just an example of one of thousands and thousands of tools out there that people can download without very much knowledge, uh, read a few help files, and actually be able to figure out uh, how to put all this together. So something certainly to think about that it's not that hard for people to attack your network from inside. So we need the protection there as well as the outside.